Before I get into anything, I want to comment on my last video and the uncharacteristically number of views I got. Uh, last time I checked, it was over 3,000 at this point, which is not a lot, but for me, it might as well be a million. Uh, I'm the type of YouTuber, it's like, you know, I just put my videos out there, I do this more as a hobby, uh, I don't live off my material, uh, obviously. Um, and, you know, I'm happy with just getting a couple hundred and then just calling it a day and then moving on to the next video. So, for me to see something that's over 3,000 views is somewhat shocking. I don't know, I, I still don't know how it happened, uh, I guess because I posted it so soon after Battleground that it was just like, just something that came up in a lot of search feeds. I, I don't know. Um, I feel like I got a lot of first time viewers uh, from watching the video and um, got my fair share of dislikes as well. I'm sure I ticked off a few WWE fans by uh, saying what I said, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to thank everybody for watching the video. Hope you all liked it. Uh, and even if you didn't like it, thank you for commenting and expressing that you didn't like it. Uh, I'm all for open discussion and all that fun stuff, but uh, for those of you wondering, no, I did not watch Raw this week, and I did not watch SmackDown this week. I didn't even watch this week's NXT, uh, so I'm an episode behind on that. I was just like, man, I went a whole week with no WWE. I'm kind of happy with that. The only wrestling I did watch was Lucha Underground, uh, obviously, and uh, I did some catch-up on the New Japan uh, G1 Climax, which has been great, and watching that has made me happy. So it's nice when I'm watching the... Uh, the expressions of the art form that I actually enjoy. And uh, Lucha Underground wasn't even their strongest episode this week, but goddamn was it such a breath of fresh air after Battleground. And uh, the G1 Climax is just, based on what I've seen, is just killing it right now. So I'm, I'm just happy as hell right now. Uh, what did I do instead of watching Raw and SmackDown? Well, uh, got caught up on some reading. I've been reading The Odyssey. Uh, you know, the classic written by Homer. Uh, you know, I love classical literature and all types of stuff like that. So reading this has actually been a delight. And I finally got around to start reading, uh, my He-Man and She-Ra, um, cartoon, uh, behind the scenes book or whatever. And, uh, that's been a really interesting read. I didn't realize that much work went into each episode. Uh, so that's kind of, uh, it's kind of funny that a show that looks like it was made on the cheap, and it was, uh, still a lot of work went into it, and there's a lot of interesting behind-the-scenes uh, factoids included as well. So, uh, that's been a fun read. Um, I've also been getting caught up on certain shows on Netflix. I've finally gotten around to watching, um, or started watching, uh, House of Cards Season 5. I'm about halfway through it. Love it. I mean, as long as I get to see Frank Underwood and Claire Underwood act completely awful and just backstab a bunch of people, I'm good. That's all I need. That's all I need out of that show. And the show is giving me that, so I'm happy. Um, I also, I want to watch Glow. I want to watch, I, I still haven't seen Mystery Science Theater, uh, the new season of that. I really wanted to see that. I looked at the episodes, or uh, the movies that they chose for these episodes. And I was like, okay, Young Gary, I've seen that. Reptilicus, I've seen that. Star Crash, I've seen that. <laughs> uh, I think in total I'd seen like four or five of the movies uh, that were in the new season. It's like, damn, I... <laughs> I really need to see this season. So, yeah, I really want to watch that. I uh, want to get caught up on Twin Peaks. I uh, want to get caught up on Game of Thrones. A uh, bunch of other things going on. There are other ways to occupy my time besides just watching WWE. Especially when Raw bores me to tears and SmackDown bores me to tears and the pay-per-views like the one we saw last Sunday are complete garbage. Um... So, uh, yeah, I, I think my time was well spent <laughs> instead of uh, deciding to watch Raw or SmackDown. I've heard that they're doing Cena versus Nakamura in a contenders match for next week's SmackDown, which is a move that, to me, reeks of desperation. It's almost like, oh my god, people are shitting on SmackDown. They hated the pay-per-view. Um, I don't know what the ratings have been like. I honestly don't know. I quite honestly don't care. Um... I don't use that as a barometer to decide whether or not I should like something. I just kind of like, I watch it, and if I don't like it, I'm not going to watch it. I don't care if everyone else in the country is watching it. So, uh, But I, I don't know what the live attendance has been like. I don't know what the ratings have been like. But I feel like this negative, overwhelmingly negative reaction to Battleground kind of forced their hand a little bit. And they were like, oh shit, we got to give them something to like. So they're rushing Cena versus Nakamura out there with no build because fuck you, why not? Um... I don't really care. Either Cena's going to go over or it's going to be a three-way at SummerSlam with Mahal. And 
whatever. I haven't cared about Mahal's reign yet. It's like, <laughs> it's like, okay. Um, so there's that. Uh, so yeah, that was pretty much my week as far as like how I filled the the five hour void from um, uh, skipping Raw and SmackDown. Uh, couple of channel updates I do want to get into. I referenced the He-Man She-Ra book. Uh, I had mentioned uh, at some point late last year or early this year that I was planning on doing a top 20 Masters of the Universe episodes uh, countdown list. Um, that will not be happening in 2017. Uh, I've just got too much on my plate now and way too much stuff going on. Uh, it's not something I'm going to be able to get done at any point this year. Next year, post-WrestleMania season, um, I do have an idea for a WrestleMania uh, video series. I didn't do one this year because uh, I didn't have any ideas on what to do, but uh, typically, I, you know, every so often I'll get an idea for a WrestleMania series of videos, and I think I have a pretty good idea of one. So um, once I get past that, then I can think about starting to do, like, okay, we can do the He-Man video, and we can do... Um, couple other things which brings me to my next point uh the kaiju movie reviews which is a project i've been working on all year long and trying to think of what movies i should include in the kaiju movie reviews um not including the godzilla series because i've already reviewed that but um again that's another project that unfortunately has got to be pushed back to next year because i just don't have time to really dedicate enough time to put the videos out in close enough succession to where uh people would actually care um like i could probably knock part one out now and then I wouldn't be able to get to part two until like February and then not to get to part three until like the summer so I'd rather wait until I could get the videos out at least fairly quickly kind of like what I did with the Godzilla movie reviews where I got I was able to get one part of the series out each month and I would like to have that be the same thing here with the kaiju movie reviews um and this one's gonna be longer too because it's 44 movies I I counted 44 movies that I'll be reviewing, um, potentially 45, and I bring this question up to you guys, uh, I'm not gonna put up a Twitter poll, I'm not gonna do anything like that, just post your feelings down in the comments section below, and, uh, tell me what you think, and, uh, I wanna hear you two cents on this, um, so calling all Ultraman fans, anyone who is a fan of Ultraman, um, I was looking over the list of movies that I wanted to review as part of my Kaiju movie review series, and I realized that Ultraman was not on my list, and I got to thinking about it, and I'm like, you know, Ultraman is such an icon, and he's such a, you know, such a staple of, like, Japanese pop culture, and is tied to the Kaiju, um, genre, uh, you know, E.G. Tsuburaya started the production company that ultimately made Ultraman, so... Um, and then Toho ripped off Ultraman with Jet Jaguar and Zone Fighter and other things like that. So, it, you know, I feel like it's like, damn, I do kind of have to include Ultraman. He should be on there somewhere. I mean, if I'm doing Gamera, I'm doing the, the big Toho ones, and if I'm doing Daimajin and all these other things, I'm like, yeah, like, Ultraman should be on there, but... I am not the most knowledgeable person about Ultraman. I've only seen a handful of episodes from the original show. I've never actually watched a wealth of material from Ultraman. So, I pose this question to you. Um, if you're interested in me including Ultraman in my Kaiju Movie Review Series, which I'm, I'm going to do, uh, but I just want your input. Um, I have a couple of ideas on how to do that. One... I watched the entire original series, which was 39 episodes, I checked, uh, the original 39 episode series, and then my review would basically be just a, an overview of that show, and give my overall impressions of it. Or, um, I could review one of the Ultraman movies, of which I have watched none, so that's where I'll ask you guys, okay, what would be the best Ultraman movie for me to review? Uh, and state why in your comments down below. Like, which Ultraman movie would be the best one, like, the best experience for me, personally, uh, and would be most worthy of a review? It could be the worst one, and you would just want me to review the worst one. I don't know. I'll leave that up to you. Uh, just make your case down below, and I'll go with which whichever one sounds the most interesting to me. Uh, so, yes. So, Kaiju movie reviews, gonna be postponed, but Ultraman is going to be included, so... And, you know, six in one, half a dozen in the other. So uh, hopefully you all will enjoy those when I eventually get around to doing them. 
Uh, I will have a review of Godzilla Monster Planet, the animated Godzilla movie that's going to air on Netflix. Uh, so once that airs, I'm watching that motherfucker immediately, and I'm going to review it. So uh, you, for those of you who like my kaiju-based reviews, that's one you can look forward to later this year, whenever it debuts on Netflix. So uh, there is that. Um, other channel updates? Uh... My classic match reviews, I have elected to stop those because um, I have a different idea of what I want to do instead. Uh, or uh, Not so much stop them, but like evolve them into something else. So instead of reviewing just one match uh, once a month, um, and by the way, my, next, my final classic match review is actually going to be at the end of this video, so stay tuned to the end and you'll get to hear the final one. But um, I'm kind of getting the idea, instead of doing a singular classic match review... Uh, I would do top 10 lists. Like, for example, I would pick Ric Flair. And then I would go down my top 10 favorite Ric Flair matches of all time. Something like that. And uh, that's something that uh, will require me to obviously watch more matches and um, do a little bit more research and uh, kind of take... For some guys, I'll have like 20 favorite matches and I just got to kind of rewatch some to kind of narrow down my list to see uh, where you know, what's the best list I could possibly make. So, um, that's something that I want to evolve, uh, the classic match reviews into. It'll probably be a couple months before I do the first one, um, but that's something I plan on starting to do maybe around September or October time, so be on the lookout for those. Uh, but yeah, the end of this video is going to be the, cl the final classic match review, so, uh, hopefully I give you a good one, and hopefully, uh, it's worth listening to, because it's going to be the last one for a while. Uh, also my Star Wars book reviews, uh, those will continue on as scheduled, and the, the one for July was actually filmed right before I turned on the camera to film this video, so you'll be seeing that one tomorrow. Uh, I'll go ahead and tell you what it is. It's the Jedi Academy Trilogy. That's the next thing I'm reviewing, so, uh, just filmed my review. That one will be up tomorrow, so be on the lookout for that. So, um, yeah, a lot of changes coming to the channel. I've got a lot of new ideas coming, um... Yeah, it's funny, when I'm not bogged down watching Raw or SmackDown, it kind of like my creative juices flow a little bit more. It's like, ah, oh, I can do this and that and this and that and this and that. So, um, if any of that interests you, be sure to click the subscribe button down below, click the little bell to get notifications when I post new videos, uh, like, post comments, do all of that fun stuff. Uh, retweet my videos uh, when you see them pop up, you know, uh, whatever you want to do. Um, Let's turn that 3,000 view thing into a regular thing. I'm just kidding. I'm not expecting that. But uh, in any case, uh, yeah, so that's kind of the immediate future of the channel and some of the future projects that I plan on doing. So, uh, yeah, very exciting stuff, and I can't wait to actually get around to eventually knocking that stuff out. But, again, I can't stress the Ultraman thing enough. Like, if you're interested in me reviewing anything Ultraman-related, uh, please tell me and give me suggestions down below, and I will be sure to include that in the... Uh, the kaiju movie reviews when I eventually get to it. So, um, that is the end of that. Uh, that pretty much covers everything I wanted to cover in this video. Uh, so let's get to the classic match review. Uh, because it is July and we have the 4th of July, the birthday of America, I thought it'd be neat to do like an American themed match. Uh, one that kind of fits. And, uh, the one that I'm doing is Hulk Hogan versus Sergeant Slaughter in a Desert Storm match from, uh, I think it was June of 1991, uh, it, was held in, uh, it was held in Madison Square Garden, and it was a match that I remember seeing in a magazine, uh, not a WWF magazine, but an old, uh, like, uh, pro wrestling magazine, I remember seeing pictures of it in there, and I do remember seeing a Desert Storm match to, between Hulk Hogan and, uh, Sergeant Slaughter, uh, on one of my old, like, uh, it wasn't a Coliseum videotape. It was one of the Columbia House Best of the WWF tapes. Uh, it was like the most unusual matches or something. And they included uh, a Hogan Slaughter um, Desert Storm match, which as a kid I thought it was crazy. But uh, the MSG match, which I saw years after the fact, uh, was actually even better and much crazier. So um, it was one that I was very interested in doing. And I guess I'll start off by giving my impressions of the Hogan Slaughter Angle, um, which involved Sergeant Slaughter becoming an Iraqi sympathizer, and uh, that led to him stealing the title from the Ultimate Warrior and ultimately losing the belt to Hulk Hogan, Ra Ra America, at WrestleMania 7, which is a show that 
uh, honestly, it was my favorite WrestleMania from my childhood. I have a lot of fond memories of that show. Um, that angle uh, rubbed a lot of people the wrong way, stirred up some controversy, and some people thought it was in very poor taste. And I understand that. But as a kid, I kind of looked at it and was like, nah, it's just, you know, it's heel versus face, right? Um, uh, to me, my biggest problem with it was that they stretched out the angle too long. And, um, you know, by this point, I mean, uh, the Gulf War was pretty much over even before WrestleMania. So, um, you know, here it is, it's June, and they're still having matches. It's like, Jesus Christ, guys. And then by SummerSlam, you get Hogan and Warrior versus uh, Slaughter and his crew. And it's like, good lord, guys, can we get a better main event than this? It's like, come on, we're done. It's like, current events. Current events. Let's move on to something else. And I personally think uh, the main event probably should have been Hogan and Warrior versus Jake and Undertaker because they had done the angle where uh, Ultimate Warrior was feuding with The Undertaker and then Jake joined uh, The Undertaker's side and turned on The Warrior. And I think that could have turned into a tag match involving all four guys. And then that could have helped them springboard into the Hogan-Undertaker match at uh, Survivor Series later that year. So um, to me, that probably would have been a better main event for SummerSlam 1991. But um, that said, uh, the Hogan-Slaughter-Desert Storm matches... Uh, was something that, again, it was largely for Coliseum video, uh, home video releases, and house shows. Um, it was not something that was done on TV, not done on a Saturday night's main event or a pay-per-view or anything like that. It was just a series of matches that was taking them through the live events tour. And it's one of those things that kind of became like a hidden gem. Uh, kind of like um, the, the Warrior Undertaker body bag matches that were happening that same year. Uh, there were these matches that were going on where they're kind of the precursor to the casket match. Uh, it was Undertaker and Warrior having these body bag matches, and they were kind of like these really neat special attractions at the live shows, but um, they were not done on pay-per-view. Uh, it's really weird that as intense as that feud was, that Warrior and Undertaker never had a pay-per-view match, but... Uh, that was kind of the situation that was going on in 91. So you had all these hidden gems. Really, it gives me more incentive. Like, if you look at it, it's like, God damn, they're doing Desert Storm matches. They're doing body bag matches. I really want to go to a live event. They're doing all this stuff that I will not see on pay-per-view or television. But again, that was the nature of the business back then. And the Desert Storm matches were kind of these wild, no-holds-barred matches where anything goes. And they kind of... They were this nice evolution from the Hogan slaughter match at WrestleMania where Hogan was the all American good guy fighting for what's right. And slaughter was the rule breaker trying to get himself disqualified to save the title. Basically. I mean, that was, that was the basic story of that WrestleMania seven match where slaughter was doing every dirty thing in the book, not caring if he got DQ'd, if he beats Hogan, great. If he gets DQ'd, oh, well, I saved the title. So, um, he was playing by slaughter's rules and by, you know, just, playing by a new set of rules and acting all violent and crazy. And after the WrestleMania match, um, I remember seeing this footage where Hogan goes backstage to celebrate and Sergeant Slaughter throws a fireball in his face, indicating that the feud's not over and it just got elevated to a whole nother level because Slaughter, again, not playing by the rules and is just going to do anything he can uh, to beat Hogan. And that leads to these series of matches right here, the Desert Storm matches. Uh, and this one in particular, the MSG one, um, I, again, I've only seen two versions of this match. The one that was on the video I grew up with and this one, and I think this one is the better of the two. And it's been, for those who remember those matches, this one is the most celebrated of the Desert Storm matches they had. Um, it was crazy, violent, and nuts. Uh, and it was, for 1991, it was the type of thing that you just don't expect to see. And even nowadays, uh, it had more of like a raw... It had more of a raw violence to it. Uh, what I mean by that is, uh, well, I talked about it when I reviewed Tully Blanchard versus Magnum TA in their steel cage match at 85. That one, you know, not a whole lot of flashy stuff, not like big spots or anything, but you really believed that they were beating the shit out of each other. And it was this raw, intense you know, believable violence to it. Um, it wasn't like a stunt brawl like you would see today. And that would, you know, you watch something like Extreme Rules and it's guys jumping off of ladders and through tables and all this other stuff. And that passes for violence. But to me, that's more of like a stunt 
well, yeah, I, I don't want to say a spot fest, but it's kind of, it's very stunty and not, um, kind of this raw, intense, uh, violence to it. Uh, this, uh, you know, the Magnum TA, uh, Tully Blanchard match definitely had that. Other examples, uh, Bret Hart and Steve Austin at WrestleMania 13, without question, had that, um, I remember Jim Cornette saying something, it's like, that match had a very classic NWA feel to it. I'm like, yeah, he's absolutely right, and I know what he's talking about. Uh, I would say uh, Cactus Jack and Triple H at Royal Rumble tw uh, 2000 kind of had that appeal going for it, and this was at an age where the stunt, kind of the stunt brawl style kind of took over, but uh, I thought that match had that kind of raw, like, oh my god, you really believe that these guys are beating the shit out of each other type of um, intense violence to it, and I felt like this match had that too, uh, Slaughter and Hogan, where, you know, uh, Sla uh, Slaughter, uh, bled, uh, like crazy, which, uh, this was at a point where Vince was kind of moving away from that type of violence, and, um, you know, they used everything they possibly could at each other, and it wasn't the typical Hulk Hogan match, and I always love watching Hulk Hogan matches that are not the typical Hogan match, where it's like, he gets his ass kicked, then he hulks up, three punches, boot, leg drop, it's over. Um, you know, that formula. Um, I love it whenever you can see stuff from Hogan that's outside of the formula. That's uh, sh him showcasing skills that you don't get to see very often. Like the Boss Man Steel Cage match, which I reviewed as part of the series as well. Where uh, that one you see Hogan doing a superplex off the top of the cage onto a 350 pound Boss Man. Or something like his match with the Great Muda in 93, where it's like, that is about as atypical of a Hogan match as you could possibly see. Um, matches like uh, the match he had with Billy Kidman at, what was that pay-per-view? It was in 2000, uh, the one where they had the crazy hardcore match. Um, matches like that, uh, that really showcased that there was more versatility to Hogan's abilities than like what you would typically, the showmanship you would typically see out of him. And in this match, you see this wild brawl where they use all sorts of weapons. Um, and they really sold the exhaustion and the beatdowns as well. There's that one spot that I've seen GIFs of, uh, or GIFs, whatever they're called, uh, um, where Slaughter grabs a chair and he's bloodied and he's been beaten down. And he goes to hit Hogan with the chair and he falls backwards because the weight of the chair was too much for him and he was too exhausted and lost too much blood. Um, and I love stuff like that. I love little nuances like that, and I love, um, little touches like that. And in this match, you don't see Hogan Hulk up, you don't see the leg drop, uh, you just see two guys just beating the crap out. Hogan dominates most of the match, actually, which kind of, like, works in that it's Hogan getting his revenge type of way, uh, for what Slaughter did to him at, uh, in, you know, after WrestleMania 7 had concluded. And, uh, yeah, you know, for two guys that were, you know, Slaughter was past his prime at this point, and, um, Hogan was not known for being the most extreme or most, uh, athletic guy in the world, but, you know, for, within those limitations, I felt like they worked together really well and, uh, put on a hell of a match, and I think this one is kind of a hidden gem, so if you haven't seen this match before, I highly recommend it. Uh, you see a very different type of Hulk Hogan. He's not dressed in the red and the yellow. He's dressed in uh, camouflage gear, and he has, like, a gas mask on, and it looks really crazy. Um, and it looks, actually, to be honest, it's probably the most badass that uh, Babyface Hogan has ever looked. So, uh, yeah, if you're, if you're a Hulk Hogan fan, absolutely watch this match. Uh, if you're the type of guy that wants to see something different out of Hogan, absolutely watch this match. Or if you're just looking for, like, a neat, like, hidden gem uh, from the norm uh, that you don't normally see in, uh, you know, WWF or in pro wrestling or whatever, uh, check this match out. I think it's uh, it's really fun and very enjoyable, and I think it's uh, um, one, of, uh, one of the more enjoyable matches of Hogan during this era, when he was kind of, like, in the winding down phase of the Hulkamania uh, freight train from that started in 83. So, uh, yeah, I highly recommend checking out this match. I really enjoyed it. And I really enjoyed going back and watching it again. Cause it was like, man, this is, this is so outside of what you normally see. And I like stuff like that. So, uh, really good stuff here and, uh, big thumbs up for me. And of course, you know, it's July, it's America's birthday, all that other stuff. So rah, rah, America and all that stuff. So it's a fun match to watch at this time of the year. So, 
Uh, yeah, I recommend checking this match out. I really enjoyed this match, but... Uh, this will also be my final classic match review done in this format. Like I said, this is going to evolve into a top 10 series uh, that will be done monthly, but I'm going to need some time to kind of develop it and decide what I want to do with it. So uh, that one will be coming maybe late September, maybe late October. We'll see. Uh, depends on uh, how everything goes. Uh, but yeah, like I said, uh, thank you all uh, for watching this video. And uh, thank you all again for uh, giving me the insane number of uh, views for my last video. Again, I was not expecting that. Um, so I'm not sure what it was about that video that you know, drove up the views so much. Again, maybe people just like to see me complain. I don't know. It's like I try to be more positive, but when I get angry and I get pissed off, and maybe that just makes it more fun to watch. Who knows? But uh, like I said, you know, like the video, comment down below, especially if you're interested in the Ultraman thing. I can't stress that enough. Tell me. Uh, tell me what you think and give me as much advice as possible as far as, uh, you know, picking a, a, an Ultraman review to do. Um, but yeah, like it, comment on it, uh, hit the subscribe button, and hit the little bell there so that you get notifications about my new videos. Uh, but uh, that is all I have for you right now, so until later, uh, I'll see you, everybody.